Electronic trading platform TradeWeb has a newly minted CEO. Billy Holt took over the reins this week after serving 14 years as president. And Billy joins us now along with our own Shanali Basic. Thank you both for being here. Shanali, I'll kick it over to you to start. Billy, you know, talk to us a little bit about volumes here because last year things were looking rough. They turned around. You ended with some record volumes and significant businesses. Banks are reporting earnings next week. And so this trading boom that we are seeing, does it continue on into 2023? Yeah. Thanks for having me on, guys, and Happy New Year, Happy Friday. Um, you know, last year was really almost like a tale of two stories. There was the first half of the year, actually, there were really robust volumes across the board. And then the second half of the year, as you guys know really well, I think volatility got to a place where there became kind of liquidity concerns around a couple of the core fixed income markets, the government bond market, the, the TBA mortgage market, to say two. And then, to your point, Sonali, at the very end of the year in December, December, we felt like we really got back to a little bit of what I would describe as a sort of normal or natural cadence around fixed income trading. Volumes rebounded really well in government bonds, TBA mortgages, global swaps, and really we saw really significant volumes um, in an important market, the high yield credit market and the IG credit market. So we feel really good about kind of where we're sitting now, early January. Um, we think this is a really good and beneficial market towards fixed income trading activity. And I'm excited, sort of my first week as, as CEO of the company, and thanks very much for having me on. You know, that fixed income boom that you're seeing, is it across the board? Is it unanimous? Or are there places where it'll take a while for pockets of activity to come back? Yeah, it's a great question. It's really like, you know, these markets are all so different and they're different enough in very specific ways that it's rarely like across the board, green light, green light. And so you definitely have different markets responding differently amongst this environment. I would say the mortgage market still has a way to go in terms of how it's functioning, in terms of volumes getting back to where they were, but really, really strong and good news about the credit markets. And for us, kind of across the board, really all through like last year and we're really feeling very bullish about our ETF trading activity. We think that's a market that's really kind of in green light mode. Uh, hey, Billy, it's good to see you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, now, I'm a commodity nerd, so, so this is a little bit biased, but anyone in the commodity market is going to tell you that commodities are trading poorly. There's not enough liquidity. Um, there's not enough interest in trading the commodity world. What are you seeing in actuality? What does it look like? Yeah, I think the commodity market has been, you know, absolutely struggling. And there's aspects, you know, of the commodity market. I'm kind of a, um, you know, a little bit of a mortgage nerd, so we're kind of nerds together. There are aspects of the commodities market that sort of are a little bit remind me of what's happening, you know, in the mortgage market, where it just feels like it's a little bit of a one-way trade, um, and it's a little bit of a dark moment. I think both of these businesses, the commodities business in general, and obviously the mortgage market, have lots of hist history around resiliency. So I do feel like long term, both of these markets are going to have better days but I definitely would agree with you that we're you know we're in a challenging moment around both of those businesses. Willie if you're a mortgage nerd good morning it's Guy talk <laughs> me through what your expectations yeah. are for the US housing market this year. You know, I, it's it's hard to be overly, overly kind of bullish on on kind of housing with this level of kind of uncertainty. Um, you know, my general instinct is back to the sort of, you know, the way that market trades is, you know, it's important to get more, more market makers in that business. As you guys know really well, the European banks have historically been very strong in the mortgage market. The Credit Suisses, the Deutsche Banks, the UBSs, et cetera. They've kind of receded from that business over the last few years and I do think it's important that that mortgage that the mortgage market evolves from just the JP Morgan's the Goldman's the Bank of America's the cities and the Morgan Stanley's and there becomes more more participants in that market and in some ways it winds up mimicking some of the evolution that's happened in the government bond market where you have more of the high frequency firms participating and adding liquidity to that business hey, Billy, I think that will help the market and housing you mentioned liquidity being a concern at times and we haven't seen the worst of it that that's the reality when it comes to tightening uh, as far as quantitative tightening so how much is liquidity still a concern and I'd love for you to get specific on where it could become mostly a concern I, you know, I was I was sort of watching your guys show a, a t you know a ton, not surprisingly, during the pandemic, and it was really interesting just to see how the government bond market became kind of like frontline news around 
how that market is operating, right? What are the bid covers when someone's trying to sell? There's a buyer. What is the price below the buyer? How is the market really operating on a moment to moment basis? Um, and those are the really kind of important things, right? Like there's all this evolution that's happened through electronic trading, but at the end of the day, a seller needs a buyer. A buyer needs a seller. Um, and these markets need to operate at a very high level for the whole system to work. My general feeling is there's been some like very interesting, I know you had um, PIMCO on just before me. There's been very interesting news, for example, in the government bond market about two things. One is um, the evolution of all to all trading in government bonds, and the other is you know, real news around the potential of central clearing in government bonds. My general instinct is those are two really strong developments around this concern and issue around liquidity, and TradeWeb is very supportive of both. You know, Billy, I'd love to kind of get your sense here on how people invest in this business in the 2023 environment where margins are a huge question. People are cutting jobs on Wall Street this year. So do they really sit there and invest in technology, invest in electronic trading, or does something start to fall off there? Yeah, it's an interesting question. You know, the really, you know, the really sort of true and kind of interesting story about the evolution of electronic trading and the story of TradeWeb was always a little bit of mythology, quite honestly, that the more these markets became transparent, the more these markets evolved around the electronic path, the harder it would be for the banks to make money. And you and I have talked about that, Sonali, for a while. I think one of the sort of really interesting things that's happened over the last couple of years is as these markets have become more mainstream electronic, on the trading side, the banks have made kind of, you know, hand over fist money and have been very, very profitable, as you guys know very well, you know, in our space. Now, obviously, on the banking side, that's a different story, and the challenges that have happened there is a different story. But my very strong feeling is, you know, electronic trading has become so mainstream now that you have to invest properly in terms of the behavior in this space now mm -hmm. and all of the banks and all of the big clients have really taken that seriously and invest in a very significant way. So pair that with me with Wall Street's call to return to office. Like if you don't return to office, are you then like extra expendable at this point based on what you just said? Uh, you know, we, you and I have had this conversation a little bit over the, over the past couple of years. Like, I, I have always been a, bit, a pretty big believer, you know, in the in the return to office moment. I want, you know, I want TradeWeb back in the office, um, not just you know Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, but Fridays too. So if anyone from TradeWeb is kind of watching this at home, like come back to the office because we we definitely want people in the office five days a week. <laughs> end of the three day three-day weekends. Um, really, I think the banks, you know, quite honestly, and I say that um, both seriously and with, with some humor, you guys know me a little bit. Um, I think the banks want people back in too. I think people are coming back to the office. I think this is a really optimistic time for the business. I think, you know, collaboration and spontaneity and people getting together is really important. That's what makes my job fun. I think that's what makes bond traders' jobs fun. And I think that's the direction that we're headed. Billy, I'm in London. Final quick question from me before we wrap this yeah. up. Um, is 2023 going to be a year in which you want to focus your attention on the United States, or do you think it's a rest of the world story now as well? Do you need to widen the lens a little bit? It's definitely, a, you know, it's definitely the, the rest of the world story as well. And I think, you know, focus is obviously, you know, one of the key things in, in my business and in all of our businesses. We have an amazing European, um, you know, business at TradeWeb. European swaps, from our perspective, is a tremendous growth area. And we feel really good about our entire European business. But absolutely right. This is a, this is a global story now. Um, and we're very focused on our European business. Billy, great to catch up. Such fun to speak with you. Thank you very much yes. indeed for Thanks, sharing guys. some of your time on a Friday. Billy Holt, CEO of TradeWeb.